The back wall displays various voodoo items, such as a bandana that was once worn by a voodoo queen. Nice bloodstains. A street drummer has settled outside the museum. Reminds me of a book critic for the New York Times. He's got more hair than Mosley. An official voodoo wish and stump. Rub it and make a wish, a card said. Funny, I say the same thing to women. An authentic looking pole marks the center of the room. Authentic what? Gabriel isn't sure. Dr. John is a huge man. If his manner weren't so pleasant, he'd be intimidating. Could I ask you some questions? That is why I am here. What can you tell me about voodoo? Historical voodoo? Or the voodoo currently practiced in the city? What can you tell me about this? Tell me about historical voodoo. Very well. I will start at the beginning, Mr. Knight, and will go on from there at your prompting. Sounds good. As you may know, Voodoo is a grassroots religion formed by the mixing together of many different African tribal religions and Anglo religions, such as Catholicism or Protestantism. In other words, it is a religion born of the African slave trade, but African slaves were imported not only by the United States, but also into the West Indies where the French and Spanish ran plantation islands. Prior to 1803, the New Orleans area was owned by France. The French Creole in those days owned many African slaves. But the Creole did not permit their slaves to gather, giving no chance for Voodoo to breed here natively. The Creole also knew enough about the corrupted pagan practices of the West Indies slaves to ban the importing of slaves from that region. So, how did voodoo come to New Orleans? After the Louisiana Purchase, American legislators relaxed regulations. Slaves were permitted to gather. The Americans also removed the ban on West Indies slaves. Around the same time, a slave revolt occurred in Santo Domingo, what is now Haiti. Between the lifting of the ban and the Haitian revolt, West Indies slaves began pouring some of them were free people of color, freed or escaped slaves. Some came with their white owners who were fleeing from the revolt. Tell me about current voodoo. Many people think of voodoo in terms of magic spells or gregory. That kind of practice is actually called voodoo and is only a part of true voodoo. Voodoo, the religion, has a strong following in New Orleans. In fact, it is growing quite rapidly. There are several voodoo churches or temples in the city, and others all across the United States. African Americans see it as a tradition all their own. Whites, and there are many in their religion, are attracted to it because they think it is exotic. I, personally, am more interested in the history of voodoo. Some of the new movements are copying Haitian or even African voodoo. But it is the voodoo of New Orleans that I find so intriguing. Tell me more about current voodoo. There are many voodooans in New Orleans. They often do business selling grigri telling fortunes, providing luck, and occasionally misfortune. Perhaps you would like to meet a voodoo -ed. We refer those who seek a deeper experience with voodoo to a local practitioner, Magentia Moonbeam. Sure, I'd love to meet her. She lives on the corner of Orleans and Dauphine. 
I will call her and tell her you might stop by. Great. Thanks. Do you know Malia Getty? Should I? She referred me to your museum. Many have read about our museum in the newspapers, Mr. Knight. That's a good point. Tell me more about current voodoo. You have tapped my resources. My expertise is really historical. Perhaps Ms. Moonbeam can be of further help. What exactly is hoodoo? Hoodoo refers to magic folk traditions of the South. Hoodoo is a bastard of hoodoo. Many of the Grigri are similar, but hoodoo does not have the religious aspects of hoodoo. What happened when the West Indies slaves got here? They brought voodoo with them. The native slaves were more than enthusiastic about embracing it. It gave them power, Mr. Knight, if only in the form of a communal bond. Among the first meeting places were the Bayou St. John and the shore of Lake Pontchartrain. The early voodoos were heavy snake worshippers, worshipping the one they called the Great Zombie. Tell me more about historical. 1870, the voodoo activities were beginning to cause fear among the white slave owners. An ordinance was passed to forbid slave gatherings except in designated public areas at designated times. The time was Sunday afternoons and the place, Congo Square. The slaves and free people of color gathered to dance simulations of their voodoo dances right in sight of Creole society. Of course, they also continue to meet in private for the real thing. Tell me more about historical voodoo. There were a variety of kings and queens at first, voodoo priests and priestesses. But from about 1830, a single power emerged. This was a voodoo queen named Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau ruled voodoo in New Orleans for many years. Tell me more about historical voodoo. I've given you as much detail as I can, Mr. Knight. Look around the museum if you desire more information. Could I ask you some... Of course. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. There were actually two Marie Laveaus, mother and daughter. Most people thought they were the same woman. Her continued youth added to the mystique. The original, the mother, was also known as Widow Paris. It was she that began the empire. When the widow Paris began to practice, there were many voodooans in the city. By 1830, she was voodoo queen of all New Orleans. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The widow Paris was a hairdresser for rich Creole ladies. She also paid household servants to spy for her. Between the two, she knew everything about everyone who mattered in New Orleans. She was not above using her information to appear psychic, to intimidate, or even to blackmail. You sound as though you admire her. For a black woman in the mid-1800s to gain power is an incredible thing, Mr. Knight, however she achieved it. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. She kept a pet snake, danced with it too. She held traditional voodoo ceremonies out by the lake. She took herself seriously, very 
seriously. But she was not above selling tickets for her events to curiosity seekers. She was not above using voodoo any way she could to make money, that is for certain. But if she had been in another line of work, in another age, that would have been interpreted as entrepreneurial genius rather than a sign of fraudulence. Hey, you don't need to convince me. I admire anyone that can actually make a living. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. It was Marie Laveau who defined the voodoo that is truly and uniquely the voodoo of New Orleans. She invented hundreds, if not thousands of spells, potions, charms, and incantations. These form the basis of the modern practice, not to mention the folk tradition of hoodoo. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. Her daughter, Marie Glapion, took over when the widow Paris got old. Most people thought it was the same Marie Laveau. Both Maries encouraged that point of view. The widow Paris died in 1881. Marie Glapion had been reigning a long time by then. After the death of the widow Paris, other voodoo queens surfaced, and by 1890, the cult was fragmented again. Marie Glapion just sort of faded away. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The Laveau tomb, where one or both of the Maries are believed to be buried, is in St. Louis Cemetery No. 1. It is a popular shrine for practitioners and tourists alike. I myself take tours through the cemetery on a regular basis. Really? Do you have any running this week? No. But the cemetery is open to the general public as well. I'll be going. Come back again. Welcome, Seeker. You must be the one Dr. John called me about. I guess so. My name is... Wait. Gabriel Knight. <laughs> You're too quick for me. Actually, Dr. John told me. You have come to the right place, Mr. Knight. Tell me how I can help. A small draped table displays a crystal bowl. The shelf holds a variety of unusual objects. The kind of thing Gabriel refers to as junk. The moonbeam residence looks like a cross between a voodoo temple and a Victorian fortune teller's parlor by way of Hate Street. My gentle moonbeam is wrapped in gauze and silk. She looks vaguely mysterious and mysteriously vague. Could I ask you a few questions? Of course, Seeker. What can you tell me about voodoo? My practice is mainly selling charms and potions with magic power, such as Grigri and voodoo oils. You know, everything from unrequited love, to wandering spouses, to winning a lawsuit. But my spells and charms are powerful, and they work. What can you tell me about... Much of a voodoo yen's work is protecting her clients from the spell of others. 
I make special protective Grigri to be worn in secret. They keep evil spells from working against my clients. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Why, that has nothing to do with me and my clientele. But I can tell you that you should stay as far from it as possible. There is badness there. Very bad. What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans is the center of voodoo practice in the United States. Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? You mean like my beloved Grimwald? She's a python, you know. Quite deadly in the wrong hand. I was trained by one of the great voodoo queens to learn how to hypnotize and handle snakes. Tell me about yourself. Yes, what would you like to hear? How'd you get into this business? I trained in the voodoo arts for many years with the great queen Tabitha. Really? Who's she? You have never heard of her? For shame! I can see you know little of the world of magic. I'm beginning to get that impression, yes. What kind of people come to see you? Seekers after the truth, such as yourself. Do you do anything else? I am a voodoo yen. And that is plenty. It takes much spiritual effort. How many voodoo yens are there? No one knows exactly. Many practice in secret. There are probably hundreds. But of course the level and the power of the voodoo yens differ greatly, depending on their training and natural gifts. Tell me anything at all. I haven't always lived in New Orleans. I came here from Kansas as a young woman. I can't think of anything. Very well. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? It is the greatest night of the voodoo year. There is always a traditional conclave on St. John's Eve. Most of our voodoo churches these days hold functions in the church hall. But in the old days, they had ceremonies out in the wild, and they wore animal masks and had a huge bonfire and dancing. I used to go when I was an apprentice. Sometimes in the swamp, you know, Bayou St. John, sometimes at the lake, Lake Pontchartrain. Tell me about the animal. I saw them used once or twice when I was younger, but you don't see them much anymore. They are too... close. Too close to what? Just bad karma. Uh, about Grimwald. What about her? Where'd you get Grimwald? She belonged to a traveling reptile show. She was being terribly mistreated so I offered to buy her. She's named after a spirit guide I had once. The spirit Grimwald was a very powerful female snake priestess in Egyptian times. Grimwald doesn't sound Egyptian. I only know what the spirits tell me. Monsieur, I am sure they know better than we. How'd you learn to handle Grimwald? I told you, a great voodoo queen taught me. She learned from Marie Laveau herself. Oh, fascinating. Would you consider giving me one of Grimwald's scales? No, I couldn't do that. You might do some Grigri of your own, no? One must be very careful with such things. Hair clippings, nail parings, and snake scales. Are you sure you wouldn't consider giving me one of Grimwald's scales? I told you I couldn't do that. 
How about showing me how you handle Grimoire? Really? You would like to see me dance, perhaps? That would be swell. I won't make you wait, Monsieur Knight. No matter what you see, do not be frightened. I'll give it my best shot. Gabriel grabs the shed snake skin while Magenta is otherwise occupied. They are truly inspiring, isn't it? That's certainly one word for it. Gabriel magnifies the shed skin from Magentia, Moonbeam's snake. The snake scales are hued brown. They don't match the scale from Lake Conchitrain. Well, I guess I'll be going now. Open your mind and heart, and the way will be clear to you. I'll give it my best shot. It's my favorite grandson. How nice. Your only grandson, but nice try, Grant. Make yourself at home, son. Can we talk, Grant? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Tell me about my mother. Your mother was Margaret Templeton when your father met her. She came from a very wealthy Creole family in New Orleans. She was beautiful and reckless. She was madly in love with your father, of course. But I also think she liked defying her family. Tell me something about Granddad. Your granddad immigrated to America when he was 21. He worked his... Tell me about my father. Your father was my only child. Philip suffered from terrible nightmares. What can you tell me about New Orleans? My goodness, boy. You've lived here all your life just like me. I can't tell you much that you don't already know. Tell me about... When Philip met your mother, it was love at first sight. They were married two weeks later. Never looked at a girl seriously until then. And he looked at plenty. You have your father's way with women, Gabriel. And your granddad's. <laughs> oh. Tell me about my father. I wanted to just lay down and die when he and your mother were killed in that car crash when you were only eight. It was the thought of taking care of you that kept me going, Gabriel. The police say your father swerved off the road after being frightened by something. Perhaps a deer in the road or a wild cat. Tell me about my father. Your granddad wanted Philip to have a normal life. He was obsessed by that thought. He pushed Philip to go to law school. Philip was driven to art. He painted almost in a daze. He would get so inside himself when he worked. 
Tell me about my father. He always hated it that it was Margaret's money that supported the three of you when his painting couldn't. I kept telling him, try something more cheerful, like a landscape or two. But he couldn't do it. His work was just too dark and disturbing for the public, you know. Tell me about my father. I don't know what else to tell you, dear. Tell me something about Granddad. Your granddad supported me and your father with bookkeeping. I'll tell you what, though. He hated every minute of it. Didn't really like bookkeeping one bit. Maybe that was why he had the worst luck with jobs. The night he'd come home afraid to tell me he'd lost another. <laughs> and I would tell him it didn't matter to me. But he felt ashamed, Gabriel. Tell me something about Grandad. Harrison was only 36 when he died. Your father was eight years old at the time. Your granddad was hit by a streetcar in the business district. Took me nearly a year to believe he was really gone. I'm sorry, Gran. I know you are, dear. Tell me something about Grandad. Did you know that your granddad was a poet? He was! He wrote the most beautiful poetry for me when we were courting. I always thought he should have done something with that gift. But he was such a practical man. Didn't believe in chasing after dreams. Tell me something about Grandad. I don't know what else to tell you, dear. Tell me about my mother. Your mother's family refused to give her money after the marriage. All she had left was a modest trust fund from her great aunt, who happened to like Philip. The remainder of your mother's trust fund became yours when she died. That's what you used to open your bookshop. Tell me about my mother. The Templetons are all gone now. Every last one of them. They never wanted anything to do with us, of course. What a waste. Tell me about my mother. I don't know what else to tell you, dear. Why did Granddad change his name? I don't know. I tried to ask him about his family, his life before America. But he didn't want to talk about it. He never even told me about his name change. I found out one day when I saw his passport in a drawer. Since he obviously found it painful, I never questioned him about it. But I'm sure it wasn't trouble with the law. Your granddad was the best man I ever knew. Well, Gran, I better get going. All right, dear. <laughs>